Welcome back everybody. We've implemented some new tech to the channel and I couldn't be more excited to share it with you. And uh, there might be a hint in the room. <laughs> Let's get going. I've always been envious of anyone that made 3D printed models and then seamlessly 3D printed them. It's like materialized out of nowhere. It's magic. I've tried in the past and I used standard bed slingers from a decade ago and they were just too hard to dial in and figure out what went wrong yet again. Now 3D printers have enclosures. They come in different sizes. 3D modeling software has become more refined and user friendly and best of all, they're more focused on providing reliable prints over having to constantly tinker with settings. Well, now I have the capability to make my own drone and camera accessories with my new Creality K2 Plus. This piece has become an integral part of the studio. So far I've used Tinkercad to create some very useful tools such as drone mounts for both the controller and all of my drones. I've even made nameplates, I've got microphone mounts, and just random useful odds and ends. The fact that I can make whatever my heart's desire because I either don't want to have to buy something or I can't find it is absolutely just kick ass. <laughs> so expect to see more 3D print videos. First of all, why did I even pick the Creality K2 Plus printer? Well, I'm glad you asked. First off, it's large enough to fit most models, helmets, and accessories due to the 350 millimeter cubed print bed. What? Second, it's a Core XY printer, which means the bed stays completely still while the print head maneuvers in all directions that just gives me that comfort knowing that a fault won't include slinging the model around. However, bed slingers are getting great, but my PTSD flares up when I think back of failed bed slingers of old. Third, I wanted an enclosed printer to control or mitigate outside temperatures that not only affect prints, but also with an actively heated chamber, I can use almost any type of industrial filament such as ASA, ABS, and carbon fiber. Having an enclosure also allows for quiet printing. And this thing is quiet. Check this out. Another benefit for an enclosed printer is having the ability to filter out any harmful particulates. And this printer has two carbon filters adjacent to the active heater that can mitigate some of the smell and mildly toxic airborne particles. Finally, I wanted a more refined experience that culminates in years of expertise. So Creality K2 Plus checked all of the boxes. Although they have made many recent positive changes due to the rise of specific companies such as Bamboo Lab and Prusa, or Prusa, this rise has impacted the entire 3D printing community in such a way that everyone has had to step up their game. This is the very reason you always, and I mean always hear me say that competition is a good thing. I really don't care if products suddenly are accused of copying someone else or just being labeled as a copycat. In that case, every vehicle on the road is a copycat to the Model T. Every appliance is a copycat such as enclosed microwaves. Mm. And every large adult toy is a... I'll be suing soon. But <laughs> back to the larger bed size. I'm able to fit so much more on one sheet than a standard size printer. It's so rewarding to wake up the following day to see a full tray of flawless minis, large helmets, or prints. Having the ability to print more only increases overall productivity and efficiency. With the hardened steel nozzle, it can withstand very high temperatures that can print those harder products for use in outdoor environments or allowing for stronger materials to hold more weight. So far, we've printed license plate covers and outdoor garden stakes with ABS filament, and this printer produced a beautiful print every single time. Now, I'm not saying that there's not going to be flaws. We'll get into that, but it's been wonderful for the last couple of months that I've had this printer. Another great feature is having the ability to print with up to 16 colors. The CFS Creality filament system has four slots that automatically change colors per the desired print. And if you want more, you can just purchase another CFS box that holds up to four 
things are filament, and daisy chain them. The K2 Plus automatically detects the CFSs and numbers them sequentially to ensure easy recognition of which CFS is being used. Each device also has an RFID reader, so if you buy Creality's Hyper PLA with RFID, it would automatically detect the filament, show the correct color, and provide printing profiles for best results. So you don't have to worry about things like temperature and flow rate. Even if you don't use filaments that is compatible with the RFID, you can also choose the filament settings on the interface screen where it will provide best settings per your input. You can even download profiles from Creality to make sure that they're keeping up with the latest profiles of different filaments out there. Now about that interface screen, it has pretty much everything you need to get started. You can adjust your printer settings, start prints from the USB chip reader, and fine tune temperatures, print head manipulation, and bed placement. The automatic bed leveling has been flawless and now I'm comfortable enough to skip that process with about every four prints or so. There are built-in AI features that detect errors in extrusion or what is known as spaghetti due to the internal cameras. Before each print, the printer will lay filament lines down to scan for imperfections before beginning each print. Another cool thing is if you lose power, you have the ability to resume with very little loss in quality, if any. The chamber camera is a 1080p and it's nice to be able to check in on your prints and even make time lapses for social media accounts. When my wife and I go out to dinner and I've left a print going, it's nice just to be away from the house and peek in on it to make sure everything is going well but it's accessible not only with the Orca-based Slicer desktop software, but also with the mobile app. I'll save the software features for another video, but so far, getting notifications on my phone for completions or flaws is very comforting. I don't get many flaws, but sometimes they're just misreads. I do want to mention that I do have a favorite software feature that allows me to cancel certain parts of the print bed when you get that squirrely random anomaly. Although it's rare, I have used it and it works great. So I like to keep it on the screen so I can watch the print location live on my PC. I don't know, call me silly. Down in the comments, go now. Lighting is even covered inside the printer with an LED bar and you can even modify the lighting with a slight amount of ingenuity if it's not enough for you. There are third party accessories like print beds and replacement parts that you can find to make adjustments for your use. There are thousands of both free and paid models available within the software, and this alone can keep you intrigued for days, no matter what skill level you are. It's fun to just go through random models just to see what other creators are making for you. And there's a lot of them out there. When it comes to longevity, as with anything, you need to maintain your equipment. I see so many people complain about specific failures that could have been prevented if they had just provided proper Redefined maintenance. You can't be a responsible 3D print owner and go about it haphazardly. Follow their wiki and lube, repair, and wipe and maintain your gear to increase the life of your investment. Just like changing the oil in your car. When the overall combo package was delivered at just over 100 pounds, this thing took some effort to set up and required a couple of people. It honestly feels like a car frame, so this thing isn't going anywhere. I love the aesthetics of this chassis and the shell. The printer didn't come without its flaws. The glass is thick and sturdy, but mine came detached, which is a common issue with their earliest models. The glue was coming loose, so I wasn't surprised to find that I had that same flaw. All I did was contact them, and they were great in sending me a temporary fix link to their wiki troubleshoot so I could actually get started, and then they sent me the actual door. I got it within about what, 10 days? That's pretty awesome. Another issue that was common early on and may still be hanging around are the feet on the bottom were snapping off for certain people. And it usually came in shipping. But one thing that I would recommend that Creality do is not ship it from coast to coast because it came from California in a truck. Um, we have airplanes and it would probably be easier. I know it's gonna cost more, but <sighs> I don't know, when it's sitting in the back of a truck and it's wobbling around at 100 pounds in a box, it, it's probably gonna not be good for the feet. Mine were okay, 
But if you do get that issue, just contact them and they'll lead you in the right direction as they did me. I recently had a filament feeder issue with my CFS and I sent them the requested photos of errors. They emailed me with the replacement part photo to tell me they sent what I needed. I'll keep you informed when it gets here and I install it, but I'm very hopeful. In the meantime, I went ahead and bought a second CFS, so when I fix the other one, I can have eight color profiles. Nice. The cost of this printer is not cheap. It comes in at around $1,600 for the combo, and to me, it's worth it. There isn't much I don't love about this printer, and I guess this is where I also divulged that I started a new 3D printing channel called Crafted Catastrophes with my wife and close friends. We all went into business and we got licensed in the whole nine yards so we can go to market sales and such. We all started out by helping by buying the Bamboo Lab printers. So if you've been wondering why I have slowed down a bit, now you know where else to find me just in case you just can't get enough of this. <laughs> but in all seriousness, no printer is perfect. It requires patience and close attention, but when you're dialed in, it's such a rewarding experience. Well, this Creality K2 Plus is nicely dialed in and only keeps getting better with firmware updates and third-party accessories. We provided a comparison between X1 Carbon and this particular printer on the other channel, and I'll provide the link down below so you can check it out if you're interested. If you have any questions pertaining to the K2 Plus, feel free to ask and I'll get right back with you. If you haven't already, consider subscribing. Please hit that like button to help with the algorithm struggles <laughs> and keep an eye out for more videos by turning on the notification bell. Thanks for watching and we will see you all in the next video. Have a great day.